Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome back to my Kingdom Hearts toy box. I'm here with King Mickey, and today I'm going to show you how to implement the logic for the main mission. As you saw in the playthrough video in Episode 1, this mission consists of several stages. It begins when the player approaches the radar marker at the top of the castle stairs down that way. After they defeat the initial wave of Heartless, they visit Queen Minnie in the throne room, who sends them to see Merlin, who's out at that tower out over that way. Merlin sends them to collect the magic mushroom that he needs in order to open the doorway to Timeless River, and that's out over that way. And the player travels to the farm, climbs that beanstalk to retrieve the mushroom. And then finally, the player returns to Merlin, who opens the portal. And um, so I'm going to show you how to hook up the logic for all of that. <laughs> and it sounds probably daunting, but it's actually not very difficult, as you're going to see. Some of it's a bit repetitive, in fact. Um, but we're going to take it one step at a time, and I'll show you what you need to do. And before we begin, let me remind you that I've got logic diagrams that I've posted on my blog for this episode that will help you out. The link is in the video description. And before we begin that, I just wanted to point out, some of you were probably curious why I placed this particular plant cluster here. And it's because when you're standing on the uh, starting pad looking down that way, you've got the path to get right through here. So if you're wondering why I was so picky about exactly how this particular uh, plant cluster here was placed, I have little spacer blocks and stuff over here, that's why. But I've already placed all of the creativa toys that we're going to need in order to save time, so let me show you what I've got. And we'll do that first, and I think I'm going to do this um, by stage because I don't want to overwhelm you. So the first stage is when the mission begins here at the top of the castle stairs at this radar marker. Right here. <laughs> I can select it. There we go. So I've placed some radar markers on either side. And let me zoom out so you can see exactly where those are placed. Each set of locators has the little blue dot facing toward that radar marker. So all, all of those are facing this way. All the ones down in this direction, that little blue dot on the corner is facing that way. All right. And I have an enemy wave generator here. I've got an enemy wave generator over here. And then I have a dynamic trigger, a radar marker, and a logic and. And again, all of these toys are in the Creativa Toys drawer, assuming you've unlocked them by purchasing them through the toy store. I've connected up this enemy wave generator to those five locators there with the new locator connection. And I've also set the wave so that it's five swarming symbiotes. And you basically, again, select this and scroll down to find the ones you're looking for. And since that list scrolls slowly, I did this ahead of time. And if you look at the menu on the bottom, you press A on my Wii U to set the count, and then you can change the count to whatever you want. I set it to five. All right, I did the same thing with the enemy wave generator on this end. Connected it to those five locators and configured the wave the same way. All right, so let's go ahead and hook these toys up. So the first thing we're gonna do is on the properties for the enemy wave generators, all the properties here are fine. We're just gonna take the generation delay to zero. And I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides. So that's pretty easy. All right, the radar marker. We're going to connect this up to the locator. It's right here in the middle. And we're going to set the properties on the radar marker. The beacon type is going to be a yellow ring. The beacon location is going to be the locator that we just connected. And we want this active by default. That tells the player where to go to start the main mission. 
Now this dynamic trigger, we're going to connect that up to that exact same locator. And this will handle the case when the player approaches this locator. So on the properties for the dynamic trigger, the target is going to be the locator. And I'm going to set the trigger distance to 6. Alright, so when the player approaches that radar marker, that's when we want to kick off the mission. So we're going to do a new logic connection on the dynamic trigger. When entered by player any, we're going to generate the wave on each of the enemy wave generators. So I already hooked up the first one. Now we'll hook up the second one. And we'll generate that wave as well. The other thing we want to do is turn off the radar marker. So on the dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll turn off the radar marker. We'll deactivate it. And we only want to do this action once. So on the radar marker, we'll do a new logic connection when this is deactivated we will turn off that dynamic trigger. All right, so approaching that radar marker will generate the Heartless and turn off the radar marker. Now when the Heartless are all defeated, then we want to kick off the next stage of the mission. And so on each of the enemy wave generators, we're going to do a new logic connection. When the wave is defeated, we're going to input into our logic AND. And on this one, new logic connection, when the wave is defeated, input into the logic AND. And this logic AND will not broadcast until it receives both of those signals. So once all of the Heartless are destroyed, then our logic AND will kick off the logic for the next part of the mission. And so to do that, we open up the logic menu for logic AND, do a new logic connection when complete, First thing I want to do is come down to our friendly wave generator over here and generate the wave. This is going to be for Mini. So I've already configured the wave here, like I did with the enemy wave generators, and I've selected the Mini Mouse costume from the huge list in here. You can see the little scroll bar on the right. <laughs> it's very small, so I saved a lot of time by doing that ahead of time. And we want Mini to be in the throne room. So we're going to go from here up to the throne room, and let me show you the toys I've put in here. So this locator I've placed up here in the throne room. You can see how that's positioned. The exact placement of that doesn't really matter, but I kind of like it right there. And then for this stage of the mission, we have our friendly wave generator, which will put Mini at that location. We have a dynamic trigger, another radar marker, a text displayer, and a second dynamic trigger. All right, so these five toys will control stage two of the mission. So once all the Heartless are defeated, we're going to generate Mini and put her in the throne room, and then set her up as a mission giver with these controls. And so the player will go into the throne room and talk to Mini. So that's the goal here. And we don't want to put Mini in until we need her to save memory. So that's why we're doing that. And once we're done with Mini and we walk away, we want to take her back out to save memory. And so that's what this first dynamic trigger here is for. So on this dynamic trigger, uh, let me make sure I get the right one here. Yeah. So on this dynamic trigger, we're going to connect this up to the same locator. Cancel that. Actually, we're going to connect that up to the, sorry, to the uh, friendly wave generator with an actor connection. That's what we want to do. Um, no, hold on. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Let me go ahead and delete that link that we just created. We're going to connect it up to the locator. 
The locator's fine. What I'm really wanting is not when they get away from mini a certain distance, but when they exit that throne room. And this locator will handle that just fine. Okay, so on that dynamic trigger, under the properties, the target will be the locator. And the trigger distance, I'm going to set this to 40. That will, that'll create a 40 unit radius around the locator, which will be plenty. Okay. All right. Um, now the radar marker, we're going to connect this up to Mini. So a new actor connection, and she's not there until the friendly wave generator puts her in there. So we connect up to that as our actor. And on the radar marker, under the properties, for the beacon type, we are going to use a yellow arrow, or yellow exclamation point, sorry. Beacon location will be the connected actor, and the rest of the properties are fine. And this dynamic trigger is for the mission giver. So on this one, we're going to connect this one up with a new actor connection. So that when they approach Mini, we give them their mission assignment. And on the dynamic trigger properties, the target is going to be the connected actor. And the trigger distance, I'm going to set this to be 4. So they're going to have to get pretty close to Mini. All right. Neither of these dynamic triggers should be active initially. All right. Um, I want them both off by default. So for that, we have a level starter, and I've placed this over here. Don't worry about the other creative toys over there. We're going to get to them shortly. But on the level starter, we'll do a new logic connection on Catalyze. We're going to come over to each of these dynamic triggers and deactivate them. We're going to turn them off. So that when the player enters the toy box, those will be off. So if the player decides to skip the main mission and they wander into the throne room, nothing is going to happen. That shouldn't anyway because Minnie's not there, but we're going to make sure it doesn't happen. This one in particular because that's not connected to Minnie. As an actor, that's connected to the locator. All right. Okay. So, on the logic and, so when the first stage appears completed and all the Heartless are defeated, we've already generated Mini and put her in the throne room. The next thing we want to do is a new logic connection. When that is completed, We'll come over to our Mission Giver's Dynamic Trigger and turn that one on. And we will also turn on the Radar Marker. That way they know there's somebody in the castle they need to talk to. Okay. That's good. All right, so the next thing we're going to do then, uh, let's take this a stage at a time. So we'll do this dynamic trigger first. Uh, actually, we'll set up our <laughs> text displayer properties first. So I'm going to set the text duration to four. Text style will be banner. All right, so now all of those properties are set up. Um, I think, did we set up the properties for Mini? No, we didn't. Okay, so all of these are fine. We want to take the generation delay to zero, so she shows up right away. And under the generated friend options, I'm going to set the behavior to stand still, even though she's not going to do that. Um, because we have the throne in there from the interior toys, Mini will wander over to the throne and sit on the throne. Uh, there's no way you can prevent that from happening. <laughs> She's just gonna do it. 
Um, but that will at least keep her from wandering away from the throne. So she's going to stay in the throne room. And that's kind of important. We don't want her to wander too far. Um, hopefully the player will go right from here into the throne room and so she won't have time to wander, but that property seems to help keep her near the throne. So I like that. All right, so on our dynamic trigger, again, this sets up a radius around Mini, around our connected actor there. And so once the player enters that radius, we kick off the mission um, that she's going to give the players. She's going to send them to Merlin. So what she's going to do on this is a new logic connection on this dynamic trigger. When entered by player, any, the first thing we will do is we will deactivate this radar marker for Mini because we don't need that anymore. And again, we're only going to want to do all these actions off that dynamic trigger once. So on the radar marker, new logic connection, when deactivated, we'll turn around and turn off this dynamic trigger. Next thing we want to do is display some text. So on the dynamic trigger, a new logic connection, when entered by player, any Minnie is going to say something and what we're going to have her say is down under the missions category and she's going to say I need your help she recognizes the fact that the heartless have uh, gotten into this world somehow so she needs your help all right and then the rest of what this is going to do is going to be to set up Merlin as the next mission giver. Um, and then we have a little bit of cleanup here to do. So once the player leaves Minnie and walks away, we want to take her out of the toy box. So on this dynamic trigger, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered. Oops, not by any. Cancel out of that. New logic connection when entered by player. <laughs> Any. I did press that arrow key on my game pad, but it didn't pick it up. But we want to come and turn on this dynamic trigger. All right. And this is the one that has the 40 unit radius around mini. So on this dynamic trigger, then, a new logic connection when exited by player any, we want to remove Minnie from the toy box. So we're going to defeat the wave. That will take her out. Okay. And um, if we want, this probably is a good idea, but we'll do a new logic connection on the friendly wave generator. When that wave is defeated, we'll turn this back off. I think that would be helpful. Okay, so that's pretty much everything for Mini. We still have a few things to hook up with this dynamic trigger, but before we do that, let's go set up Merlin. So coming over to Merlin, for Merlin, we're going to be visiting him twice. The first time we visit Merlin, he's going to send us out to get the magic mushroom. The second time we visit Merlin, we'll be bringing that mushroom back and he'll open the portal for us. So we have a number of toys we need to use. We want to put Merlin in dynamically, so we have another friendly wave generator. And we have a dynamic trigger to take him in and out of the toy box dynamically. For a mission giver, we have a dynamic trigger for that and a radar marker. And then when he comes back the second time, we can reuse the radar marker, but we're going to need a second dynamic trigger along with a logic gate. Okay, so that's going to set up Merlin. We also have for the portal to Timeless River, we have this. Um, locator here and note where that blue dot is facing because that's really important. Um, we have a dynamic trigger around that. It's one block or one terrain cube in size. We have a effects generator 
And then we also have our collectible tracker and our replayer for the mushroom collectible. So the first thing we want to do is come over to our friendly wave generator over here. And I've already configured the wave for Merlin and put him in. And under the properties for this, again, we're going to take the generation delay to zero. For the generated friend options, we'll set his behavior to stand still. And then we're going to do a new locator connection. And we want to put Merlin at this locator right here. Put him in front of his tower. All right. Um, uh, we need another locator here. So let me... Um, No, we'll reuse this one. Sorry. Okay, so on the dynamic trigger here, we're going to do a new locator connection. We'll connect that up to the same locator. And this dynamic trigger, we're going to set the properties. The target needs to be the locator that we just connected. And the trigger distance, we're going to set this to 60. So a 60 unit radius around this, around this locator. So on this dynamic trigger, we're going to do a new logic connection. When entered by player any, so when they enter the 60 unit radius around this, we want to put Merlin in the toy box. So we're going to generate the wave. And on the dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when exited by player any will take Merlin out of the toy box. So we'll defeat the wave. So that puts Merlin in and out of the toy box as needed. And so if the player comes up here without having started the main mission, we can still put Merlin in the toy box. He's just not going to say anything or do anything because none of this stuff is going to be active. All right, to set him up as a mission giver, we need another dynamic trigger. So this one governs him coming in and out of the toy box. This one governs when the player walks up and talks to him. And we only want to do this when the mission is active. So on our level starter, new logic connection on Catalyze, we want to turn this off. Okay, we're only going to turn this on when we're done talking to Mini, which we'll do in a minute. On this dynamic trigger, we're going to do a new locator connection. We'll connect up to that locator. Under the properties, the target has to be the connected locator. And the trigger distance, I'll set this to be 6. We're going to need a radar marker to direct the player over here. So once again, a new logic connection, or a new locator connection, sorry. Connect up to that locator on the radar marker, on the properties. The beacon type is going to be a yellow arrow. Beacon location is going to be the locator. The rest of those properties are fine. All right, so when the player is done talking to Mini, this dynamic trigger here, which turns off her radar marker and displays that text, also needs to turn on the controls for Merlin. So we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player Any. We'll come up to the dynamic trigger for Merlin and turn that on. And on that dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when entered by player any will also turn on Merlin's radar marker. And that guides the player over here. 
All right, so when the player approaches Merlin to talk to him, that's what this dynamic trigger is going to handle. So on this dynamic trigger, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We're going to reuse our text displayer over here. We're going to have Merlin tell the player what they need to do. And the closest uh, text that we have to do this is going to be under the defense category. Collect the coins. It tells the player they need to collect something. I wish we had our own text, but eh, we don't. <laughs> so that's the closest thing I can do. Next thing we'll do, new logic connection on Merlin's uh, mission dynamic trigger here. When entered by player any, we'll turn off his radar marker. And again, we're only going to want to do this one time, so on the radar marker, new logic connection when deactivated, we'll turn off that dynamic trigger. As you can see, this is kind of repetitive. <laughs> uh, the next thing we're going to do is a new logic connection. And see, do I want to do this right now? Sure, we'll do this now. When entered by player any. I want to come over to our sidekick weld over here because I don't want this weld to do anything until the mission is underway. So in a minute we're going to turn off that door. So when the mission needs it, we're going to activate it. So when Merlin directs him over here, we're going to need to be able to toss our sidekick into that well. I don't really want the player creating that beanstalk beforehand. So on our level starter, We're going to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. We need to deactivate that door. All right, we'll come back over here in a little bit and finish setting that up. So after we talk to Merlin, we'll display some text We'll turn off his radar marker. We'll activate that sidekick door. And then the next thing we need to do is put the mushroom into the toy box. And to do that, I'm going to use a replayer. So on the replayer properties, I'm going to set the playback interval to zero. And the collectible that I want to use is in the gameplay toys drawer, and it's the mushroom collectible. You can use any collectible you want, but I kind of like the mushroom. So I'm going to come out of the editor. We'll step on the replayer to get our menu in the lower right. I press B on my Wii U to start recording, and then we step off of the replayer. And then we need to go into the editor. And we need to put our mushroom out here on that uppermost cloud. So we want to put it right here, just like that. Collectibles take up a lot of memory, and so you could just place the collectible right there directly in the toy box and turn it on and off as you need it, but the problem is it takes up memory. So until we need it, there's no point in it being in the toy box. So now that we've placed it, we'll come back to our replayer and step on it to get that menu in the lower right. I press B to stop recording and A to clear. And again, only press A once or you'll corrupt the replayer. All right. So on the dynamic trigger for Merlin, the last thing we want to do is put the mushroom into the toy box. So we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to our replayer and do a playback. And there we go. 
Okay, so that is everything that Merlin's first uh, dynamic trigger has to do here, the Mission Giver dynamic trigger. Now, from here, the player goes over to the farm to get the mushroom. And to do that, they're going to need to toss their sidekick into the sidekick well. So on the properties for the sidekick well, we're going to leave this off. We do not want to remove our sidekick on entry. We do want to disable the door after use, so we'll leave that on. Detection level, we're going to leave that set to 1, so our sidekick can detect the, the well, even if he's not leveled up very much. The normal response chance is the only one we're interested in, so we're going to take that up to 10, and we'll leave this set at 0. So when the player throws their sidekick into the well, we're going to connect that up to the beanstalk. So we're going to do a new logic connection on that. When the normal response is returned, we'll come over to our replayer that we use to put the beanstalk in, and we will do a playback on that. Okay, so that will put the beanstalk in. The player can then ride that up here and pick up the collectible. And so when they pick up that collectible, the collectible tracker is going to keep track of that. So over here on our collectible tracker, we're going to set the properties. The collectible type we're going to set to be the mushroom. Did I pass it? No, there it is. <laughs> Almost to the bottom. So the mushroom collectible is what we want. And we want to show it on the radar, because that'll direct the player over to the farm. All right, so when the player picks it up, we're going to wrap up this mission by bringing them back to Merlin. And so when we bring them back to Merlin, this was used to send the player over there, so we can't reuse that. That's why we have another uh, dynamic trigger here for when the player comes back. So on this, we're going to connect up to that same locator. We're going to set the properties on this the same way we did the other one. So the target has to be the locator. Trigger distance is going to be 6. And just like before, we don't want this doing anything until the right point in the mission. So on our, collect, on our uh, level starter, we're going to do a new logic connection on Catalyze. We'll turn off this dynamic trigger. And we'll turn it on when the player picks up that mushroom. So on the collectible tracker, a new logic connection. When the final collectible is collected, we'll go ahead and turn on this dynamic trigger. And we'll also turn on the radar marker for Merlin. So new logic connection when the final collectible is collected. We can reuse this radar marker. We'll turn that on and activate it. Okay. And then the player comes back to Merlin and when they enter the region around Merlin, this dynamic trigger goes off and this will finish the mission. So on this dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll go back over to our text displayer one more time. And we're almost done for the day. I know this was kind of long, but we needed to do all of this in one session because it's hard to break it up and come back to it later. But under here, we're going to go to the victory category. And Merlin is going to say, nicely done. to let them know that they've succeeded. The next thing we will do is a new logic connection when entered by player any. We can turn off this radar marker because the player is here now. And just like before, we can use this radar marker when deactivated to turn off this dynamic trigger. And um, 
yeah. So let me go ahead and delete this logic gate because we don't really, oops, sorry, we don't really need that. <laughs> Bump my microphone. I think I like it better doing it this way. All right, so then now that my Merlin has the mushroom, he's going to open the portal, the Timeless River. So we're going to use the effects generator here for that. So we're going to connect this up to our locator. So on this dynamic trigger, a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to our effects generator and we're going to play looped out of the flashes drawer, the magic vortex. And again, the position of that locator and its orientation with the dot facing that way is very important because if you place it with the dot facing this way or this way, you're going to be looking at that magic portal from the side instead of from the correct direction. So we want it displayed in the right orientation. All right, so that will turn on the visual indicator for the portal. But of course, that's not actually going to do anything that's why we have this dynamic trigger here. And so once again, we don't want that to do anything until we're ready. So the level starter needs to do a logic connection on Catalyze. We need to deactivate that trigger area until we're ready for it. And then once the player talks to Merlin the second time, we'll turn that on. So a new logic connection when entered by player any we will activate that trigger area. Okay, and on the trigger area, a new logic connection when entered by player any. We will trigger our to toy box door and we'll reuse this door. I'm not going to set that up. Right now that's connected to our interior toy box that we used to bring the throne out for the throne room. Eventually, this is going to take them to Timeless River, but uh, I'm not going to set that up today because we are out of time. But I do believe that is now everything. So we've got the whole mission set up from the start over there to the first wave of Heartless. Once the Heartless are defeated, they go talk to Minnie. Minnie directs them over to Merlin. They come talk to Merlin the first time when they enter that area. This dynamic trigger puts Merlin in the toy box. They walk over to him. This dynamic trigger sends them over to the farm to get the mushroom. When they pick up the mushroom, this detects that, turns this on, and the radar marker, so they come back to Merlin. And when they talk to Merlin, we open up the, the portal and turn on that dynamic, or that uh, trigger area so they can walk through that portal and into the Timeless River. Now you'll notice we do not have any of the other Heartless set up at this point. The ones over at the farm, the ones up over here on the cliff, or any of the others. And um, we're going to do that in a future video. And before you test this, I would recommend going back to the start pad, saving your toy box, exiting it, and reloading it so that all of those dynamic triggers and everything are turned off correctly. Next time, I'll show you how to create a fun little side quest that will give players a reason to explore the castle. That's all for me today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget that I've got logic diagrams on my blog to help you connect the creativity toys that I used today. Again, the link is in the video description. And before you go, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Take care.